This is another quick speed shop. Check it out. Bam! We're out here digging in the backyard and building another building. I'm building a storage shed slash 1940s gas station. It's going to be awesome. We're starting to earthwork. We're going to clear the site and uh, start building this thing. So stay tuned. It's happening right now. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. Hey guys, what's going on? It's, I'm back here at the Quick Speed Shop. We've got an exciting new project I'm kicking off here for the summer. And I'll show you, you can hear the beeping in the background. I'll turn you around so I can show you. Got an excavator coming down. You see there's pins and flags in here. Well, I got too many cars that I got inside the building and they're in the way. So I get some stuff that doesn't need to be inside, but I want to undercover in another building. So bam, over here, I'm going to build a equipment style single slope roof shed building with a false gas station on the front, a 1940 gas station. So we're going to go over here, we're going to strip the topsoil off and get ready for uh, drilling. I've ordered the lumber. It's outrageously expensive and I don't want to wait anymore because it could get way more expensive. So we're going to start digging this here. I got my buddy Thad here from Federico Construction. He's also a story of this life on YouTube. And we're going to start stripping the topsoil over here. We've got a 35G John Deere mini excavator with a green bucket and a digging bucket. I want to strip the, the bad grass I got over here. I want to stone this in front of my concrete apron. And then we're going to strip the topsoil for the new building. And I've also borrowed a bobcat from my buddy John, which I, you've already seen in the video that I'm going to use to drill the holes. So we're going to go group over here and we'll get it going. We're stripping the topsoil off now to get down to my parking area to get in here. With a grain bucket, I'm going to strip that way. I might need to fire up the bobcat with a bucket to scoop out of here. We'll see how it goes. I gotta get the bobcat out. We got so much topsoil here. I'm piling it out back behind where the building's gonna be. Thad's got uh, the first layer peeled off. We're just gonna keep peeling that way and uh, cleaning the site out here. And then I'm gonna stone this up in front of the barn for now. And then the building pad will get stoned under later. I've got a pile of crusher run. It'll probably be enough to do this and have a little bit left over. And we're also gonna dig an electrical conduit for future from the corner of the pole barn here, which you're sitting in over to the about where the machine is but it's coming out good We've got good weather it's not too hot and it's pretty dry so it's working out nice um, when you're doing a project like this you want to call 811 to make sure there's no underground utilities here I've uh, done that there's no I'm out in the country there's no uh, utilities on my property except for my septic tank and a phone line everything else is above air uh, up in the air and the phone lines out by the road so I'm clear here there was actually an old swimming pool Hole that we're uh, working on here that was filled in years ago so it's going to be uh, filled out in my parking lot here eventually but we're uh, we're in the clear out here digging and we're going to keep at it
real good progress here. We're almost stripped off all the way back. Uh, we've only been doing it for like an hour. The bobcat came in super handy as they'll move a ton of the topsail out of the way or else you would have had to do a lot of handling with the mini or I would have had to got my F-250 out of the dump box and loaded and dumped it. But the skid steer worked out really good to get a lot of the dirt over here. I'm going to have a ton of topsoil left over. Um, luckily the town's got a spot on the corner I can dump it. They've been filling in an area. So it's coming out good. We're, uh, we're chucking along here. At the uh, stay tuned, I'll show you in a minute here in the video what I'm going to build. We're going to clean up the rest of the site and get ready for stone. Have them right here? Yeah. You left a uh, stub out. I don't mess around, bro. I'm a pretty good genius. So what we're doing now, I got a stubbed out condo here. We're going to dig down and find it and then dig over the new building. So I got pathway just in case. Well, I'm going to have a couple of lights in this. So we're going to dig. Bam. I'm just guessing. I'm scared somewhere. Leonard must have been here, but there's a string line. <laughs> yeah. Except this one piece. Not even sure why you would start the process. Because the machine's here. Just like so backfill that one piece. No, we'll dig the whole thing. I'll, I'll get some tomorrow. I'll backfill with the excavate. With the, I was uh, gonna say why even? Uh, it doesn't matter. Because you're here with the machine. I want to dig it. Well, I'm saying why put that one piece in? It's all out. Well, we can backfill the first sub chunk. What am I on? Probably a room. Call it a steak out. So we'll dig the, uh, here's a stub out here for the conduit. And it comes up in the building over here in the corner so I can put a, where is it, put a box on it and run a circuit out to this building. But I'll show you this, this massive root. I got this big maple tree here, it's huge. Look at the size of this root. That's gotta be four, four and a half, five inches in diameter. I didn't want to rip that out. It's one of the main feeders for this maple. So I'm, whoop, I'm gonna go under it with a conduit and uh, get back up and grade and we'll see where the stake is over there in front of the excavator. It's going to pop up inside the building about a foot or two. Bam, there we go. We got her uh, all whipped out. I'm gonna stone this Kirk. I'm gonna shorten this uh, drain pipe up, which does my gutter over here, Kirk, around. And then it's got perf pipe in front here. I'm gonna shorten that up. We dug a little swale. Um, use the laser, which I didn't show you on camera. I'll do that later. But I got the water to sheet that way. It's all going to be stone here, so it'll kind of just leach on out. And uh, my buddy Thad, the Frederico Construction, helped me out big time. I want to thank those guys for bringing the machine over, helping out. That worked out great. So, we got her uh, ready. Here, when it gets dark out, I'm going to put some stuff away. But I'm going to go inside. I'll get some uh, drawings. I'll show you what we're going to be building over here. It's going to be awesome. And I'm excited. Thanks, bro. You're all right. No COVID nuts for me. I'm good. This is as good as it gets. Nice. This is when you got to go over and help a buddy till 9 o'clock at night. It's like 7.30. He doesn't or... give you any food. 7.30. You brought me food. That was awesome. Yeah. Thanks, bro. No problem. Well, why don't you get out of my yard before you make a bigger mess and... Pedal to the floor. No problem. I hope you back out. Thanks a lot. Enjoy. Let me know when you're ready for the next stage. Next stage. I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Well, I'll show you what I'm what I'm planning on, what my plan is here while we're building this new building. 
I got, you know, I got the, if you've seen the video, I just put the floor in my pole barn here back in uh, six months ago. And I want to build a shop in here eventually, but as you can see, I've got it too full of stuff already. So I want to build like an equipment shed type building outside that I can put things like my red Jeep, which doesn't need to be on a concrete floor. It can be on a stone pad and the, uh, the double A tow truck here. This doesn't need to be outside, but as you can see on the door, I've got Richfield on here. Now, uh, probably 10 years ago, Hershey, Pennsylvania, I wanted a gas pump and I went and I bought a Tokheim model 39 pump. It's a six foot tall uh, pump and it was painted up Atlantic colors, but on the one side of the glass, it said Richfield on it, high at Richfield, high octane. So I, I'm like, I, I like the old gas stations. I always wanted to build a 1940s style gas station out in my backyard. And then in, over the years, I've got some Richfield stuff. I actually have a five foot diameter, uh, double sided porcelain Richfield sign. I put the Richfield stickers on the tow truck here. So my plan is to build a 1940s Richfield gas station out in the spot we just cleared off. And when I show you the drawing, you'll understand. But the front of it's gonna have a pump island. I've got some old granite curb that I actually unloaded this thing last year. I did a video on that. Um, I'm gonna have a granite curb pump island. I'm gonna have the pump, a couple loopsters. It's gonna have an overhang. I'll be able to display a car under it for the summer or this truck. And then in the back is going to be an equipment shed that's 24 by 20 and it's going to have three uh, bays of uh, stone bay that I can put, put the red jeep in, put this in, maybe put my doodle bug in to get them out of the weather but they don't need to be in this, this nice enclosed building. So that's what I've been working on. Unfortunately lumber is horrendously expensive now. I went and I bought the lumber. I uh, went into it was all I could do. I had been scrapping things and selling a few things. All I could do to get the money together buy the lumber. It's horrendously expensive right now and I got to get a few more dollars together to buy the roof material and it's going to be board and batten uh, roughs on hemlock on the outside and kind of weather up gray. So anyways I've got the lumber coming it's almost here they're just waiting uh, some of the posts are on back order so hopefully in another week or two I'll be getting the lumber clean the site off I gotta get some stone spread out I've got the bobcat with the auger it's going to be like post and beam construction with the hemlock siding and on the front it's going to be 1940s gas station Actually, my friend Thad and his wife, Esther, gave me some uh, windows and an old door out of their old farmhouse. So i got some windows I can put together. I've got this really cool uh, old door with the glass windows in it. So this is going to be the main front action for the gas station. And it's going to be, uh, the office is going to be like two foot deep. It's going to be more like a display case. But you'll look through the windows and you'll see I'll have shelves with uh, knickknacks and oil cans and crap on there and like, you know, trinkets on it. So it, from the outside, it'll look like it's a fully functional gas station, but it really, it's just gonna be like a, like a diorama pretty much. But the back is gonna be three bays of storage. All right, here's what I'm gonna build is something like this. This is a picture off the internet of a diorama of an early gas station. You see, it's got the pump island there, an old visible pump, some loopsters, and then it's got an old tractor in there. I'm gonna have the, the square front like that, um, except straight up and down in the kit, in the, the uh, overhang is going to go to full length of the, the building. So here's my uh, layout here. Um, as you can see, it's got a single slope roof and it's going to have a, uh, an overhang out the front that's going to be the pump island. That door and windows I showed you are going to go on the front and they'll have a overhang on the front and then there's going to be three bays, eight foot tall bay, and then two seven foot tall bays on the side that I can back those vehicles in. And then it's going to be all board and batten. But this is what we're building and out front here in the pump island, I'll have the gas pump and the loopster and stuff out there. So it'll look just like one of those antique gas stations. It's gonna be super cool and I'm super excited. So this is what we're building. Here I've had this hanging in my uh, kitchen forever. This is a gas station it's down from where I'm from, but you can see it's got the pump island here, the six foot tall pumps. It's got the overhang. This is gonna be about the size of my overhang, the doors and the windows. I've got a five foot diameter Richfield sign similar to the Sinclair sign. And yeah, except for, you know, having the three bays of storage in the back, pretty much the front of my building is going to look pretty much like this with the, with the roof overhang and the pump island. Not the hip roof layout, but the similar setup there. And here's just another picture of, this is super cool. This is a really early one. Here's a 32 Ford uh, five window. And this station looks probably like 1932 or 33. It's got four visible pumps there. You got ethyl, non-ethyl. And you've got tire display and the overhang. This is a super cool picture. So I've been collecting pictures of old gas stations to get ideas for a while. And uh, we're ready to build her. 
So the next day I went and I got my conduit and I've attached it on here, inch and a half. Run the schedule 40 all the way out. I went under that big tree root because I didn't want to rip that out. And then I got all the way to the end and I kicked over to get to the wall of the building. And of course it's raining out now. We got almost two foot of cover on the electric. Come down here, this first pin is gonna be where the post, post is just outside and I sword lock this over to be on the on the inside of the wall there. So you gotta go ahead and I'm gonna backfill this by hand a little bit to get some soft soil on the condo itself. I'll put in a lift, then I got some tape, warning tape I'll put down, then I'll backfill it with the loader and run the trench over the tires that compact it down there. But I'm gonna wait for this little rainstorm to stop because it's coming. Over there, I see it. it's coming. Rain. Okay, my last step here to prep the site is I'm going to roll out some fabric to put under the crusher on stone that's going to go all in here. This is a woven nylon, uh, they call it like geogrid fabric, and this keeps the dirt from coming up and mixing with the stone and having your base deteriorate. So I got the roll, it's uh, what contractors use like on roads and stuff, it's 12 and a half feet wide and it's like 450 something feet long. So I'll have more than enough to do my whole, my whole area over here. But um, it's uh, when you go up to the bigger roll, it's a lot cheaper uh, price break. So I bought the whole roll. I can use it other places later. So I'm just going to roll it on out and stone it with a bobcat and then roll another section. I want to make it up to my trailer here. Then I'm going to come in like saw off and make a bend here. But stone this whole area and I'll leave it shy of the new building by about 10 feet so I can work in the dirt with the bobcat and not tear the stone up. But I want to get all this uh, fresh dirt covered here and get stone on it so I can still get in the building. So I'll set you back up on the, the time lapse one more time and I'll roll this out and I'll stone it.
Okay, bam, check it out. I got the whole front here stone, but I see over there, I ran out of stone. My stone pile is empty, and so I just threw some on here to hold this fabric down. I'm gonna have to get another uh, 10 wheeler load of crusher run, and uh, hopefully, I can come. We'll tailgate spread a load on here and tailgate spread it out here so I don't have to use the machine as much. Then I'll dump the rest of it over there. But I'm gonna need probably probably two more loads for like one probably half load to finish this off half to three quarters of a load and then probably another whole load to do the building pad because it's got to come up in the corner but i'll get this dialed in and then when my lumber gets here i can start putting the posts up i want to get the the outline of the building built then fabric that and stone it up when i know what's going on there but i want to run the bobcat around on the dirt not tear the stone and the fabric all up so i back bladed it back before it rained i clean all the uh, tire tracks and pulled it all back, bladed it all back. And I think I dug this out here. I'm gonna wander a, uh, like a curve, take the square corner out and curve this and stone this too. So when I mow the lawn, I can whip around it real easy. But I'll need more stone to do that as well. But I'm super happy with the way it came out today. Even with the rain, it worked out good. Bam. So hopefully you guys stick with me on this project. It's gonna be super fun. We're gonna make a vintage Richfield gasoline filling station slash storage building. It's gonna be super awesome. And uh, you get to see some construction, some site work, and a lot of trinkets and memorabilia that I've been collecting for like 10, 15 years is gonna end up displayed in this building. It's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned and we'll have car projects and this building project come up here this summer on the Quick Speed Shop.